Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I shall appoint on earth a vicegerent. A commentary on verses 28 through 34 from Surat Al Baqarah. God says, How can you disbelieve in God when you were dead and He gave you life? Then He shall cause you to die, and then He shall give you life, and then to Him you shall be returned. The Sheikh comments, The Maker, Al-Bari, gave us life and will cause us to die and we shall return to our origin, the Maker. So we begin with death, then we come to life and shall return to life with death in the middle. We are the middle community, Ummatun Wasata, the community of death. Thus the hadith tells us, die before you die, mutu qabla an tamutu. So be certain that even now you are dead, not alive, for our true life was the origin, the handful of light, al qabdatun nuraniya. The hadith says, God created creation in darkness, then he cast his light upon them, and those whom this light touched were guided. The darkness is therefore death, then the light is life. Those whom the light touches come to life, while those whom it escapes remain dead. So in that sense you are alive as long as you live in the light of the Lord. Then Allah Ta'ala says, he it is who created for you all that is in the earth and then turned to heaven and leveled them seven heavens and he knows all things. God says that he first created the earth then turned to the heaven which was one heaven, and made it seven. He created all the things that humans need upon the earth before creating humans. All those things were created for you, the human being. But you were created for God. The world needs you, but you do not need it. It seeks you out. You do not seek it. You need your Lord. The heavens and earth are for you to dispose of as you see fit. They cannot refuse you, for they were created for you. But you must know who you are. You are God's vicegerent on his earth. You're his Khalifa. How can you assert this Khilafa? How can you assert this vicegerency so that even the angels yield to you by having knowledge of the names by becoming totally annihilated in god's attribute of al-alim the knowing so that all things will come to learn from you and take from you your role in witnessing is to return to your origin which is the name an-nur the attribute of light you must take it as a mount as a buraq to carry you to the name Allah, the attributes of Allah, and the essence of Allah. If you use it to carry you to knowledge of this or that phenomenon, you will become far from Him, from Allah, for you do not need that thing, and in fact it needs you and will come to you if you are annihilated in God. Allahu nuru samawati wal ard. God is the light of the heavens and the earth. The likeness of his light is as a niche. As Shafi'i said, knowledge is light and the light of God is not bestowed upon a sinner. If you become annihilated in this luminous likeness, you will find everything you seek. If you turn your back to this light in pride, you may fall into unbelief in the end. Instead of adorning yourself 
with the attributes of God and freeing yourself of need for the heavens and earth, you will fall into the opposite state, which is reliance upon the heavens and earth. The verse, He it is who created for you all that is in the earth, then turned to heaven and leveled them seven heavens, and he knows all things. In the next verse, Allah Ta'ala says, And when your Lord said to the angels, I shall appoint on earth a vicegerent. They said, Will you appoint therein one who will do corruption therein and shed blood while we glorify you with praise and sanctify you? He said, Truly I know what you know not. قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةِ قَالُوا أَتَجْعَلُ فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَاءَ وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ قَالَ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ This is a matter of tremendous importance and would take a great deal of time to explain which could only be done by commenting on Surah Al-Baqarah from the beginning, verse by verse. But if we consider this verse on its own, God tells the angels that the earth will be the home of a creation who will serve as the vicegerent of God on earth, representing God there. The angels view the matter from the perspective of their souls as though they are free beings, and they say, Will you appoint therein one who will do corruption therein and shed blood? This implies that they have already witnessed creatures engage in such bloodshed upon the earth. And now they are asking why such a being ought to be granted this immense status and power as he may engage in the same bloodshed that this earlier creation did. While we glorify you with praise, وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ And sanctify you, وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ That is, you created us to honor your names, السُبُّحْ All glorified, القُدُّوس All holy, unlike this bloodshedder. So how does God reply? Truly, I know what you know not. That is, your knowledge is confined to that praise and sanctification. It's confined to that invocation. You do not have the requisite knowledge to describe my creation of the one whom I shall make my vicegerent or his suitability for that task. Now, if the angels do not have the right to make this judgment, it is all the more true that no human being has the right to judge his Muslim brother and whether he will go to paradise or hell. The angels described man unfairly, while God knew that he was worthy of this lofty status and the role of representing the higher in the lower, representing God upon earth. You angels may think he is unworthy, but I have placed in him qualities which are unknown to you, for you have not seen them yet. This is not like when a Muslim accuses his fellow Muslim of something he has actually witnessed him doing. Man did not yet exist and had not yet done anything. So God told them that they had no knowledge of the matter and had not the right to draw analogies with the creatures that had preceded Adam on earth. Everyone must be judged independently on their own merits. The verse continues, And he taught Adam the names, all of them, and then presented them to the angels and said, Now tell me the names of these, if you are truthful. Knowing the names in their entirety is not like knowing only some of them, The angels knew praise and glorification pertaining to the names As-Subbuh Al-Quddus, which they knew by their effects, their traces. Thus we say in prostration, Subbuh Al-Quddus, Lord of the angels and the spirit. This was their role for time untold before Adam. 
Note the verse وَعَلَّمَ He taught He gave him knowledge عَلَّمَهُ Without an intermediary He received the secrets of the names and attributes in their entirety in an absolute sense This was a profound honor for Adam which surpassed the partial knowledge of the angels verse continues and then presented them to the angels and said now tell me the names of these if you are truthful the angels knew the traces of subuhun quddus but no other traces so god challenges them if you would judge between truth and falsehood good and evil then tell me of these names they said glory be to you we know nothing but what you have taught us Truly you are the knower, the wise. قَالُوا سُبْحَانَكَ لَا إِلْمَ لَنَا إِلَّا مَا عَلَّمْتَنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ You taught us the secrets of Subbuh Quddus, but that is all. Truly you are the knower, the wise. He whose knowledge and wisdom are intrinsic. Verse continues, he said, Adam, tell them their names. And then when he had told them their names, he said, did I not tell you that I know the unseen of the heavens and the earth, and that I know what you reveal and what you conceal? This suggests a kind of competition or test between the angels and Adam the vicegerent. Tell the angels what they cannot answer themselves, for they know only Subuh and Quddus, as though God had only two names. The angels are astounded to find that God has other names beside these, unknown to them. Take note of this, and do not imagine that the knowledge you have today is all that can be known, for it may be that God has taught another of his servants something that you do not know. The Prophet ﷺ prayed and said, I ask you by any name that you have taught to any of your creatures, or retained as unseen knowledge for yourself. And God says, And say, Lord, increase me in knowledge. This will teach you to have humility towards yourself and reverence towards others. There will always be something more learned than you, more intelligent than you, wiser than you. This is also the importance of good character. The one who has a better character than you assuredly has more knowledge than you. The verse goes, And when he had told them, anba'ahum, He informed them of these names, gave them news of them, and this news was an incredible surprise to the angels. Did I not tell you that I know the unseen of the heavens and the earth, and that I know what you reveal, and what you would conceal? Alam aqul lakum anni a'lamu ghayb as-samawati wal-ard? I know you thoroughly and truly in every aspect. He said this to them after first proving it and showing them the true nature of his vicegerent. Likewise, you must not imagine that you can gather knowledge of everything in the whole world yourself, for knowledge and wisdom belong only to God. You must always listen to the one whom God has made his vicegerent on earth and borrow from the firebrand he has given him. This is so that you do not imagine that God is constricted by the mental image you have of him or the names and attributes of his that you know. This is why we speak of the calf of eminence, kafu tashbih, which is 20 attributes the mother attributes of God which you can enumerate, the principal qualities of the divine. But you cannot enumerate or reckon them all, nor all his names, nor the essence. The names, attributes, and essence are without beginning or end. We cannot describe him in any way but those with which he has described himself. He is al-wahid al-ahad, al-fard samad the one and only, the singular, the independent. How could you then separate the names from the attributes or either of them from the essence? 
You cannot speak in absolute terms about these things. You cannot imagine that it is you who makes God one. He is one in himself and for himself. Our Tawheed of him, our proclamation of divine oneness, is a matter of his drawing us near him, and our seeking him, and striving to worship him, and to grasp the least bit of his knowledge, that we may take on his attributes ourselves and become characterized by the character traits of the divine. God says, I know what you reveal and what you would conceal. His knowledge is exhaustive. Then the verse continues, And when we said to the angels, Prostrate yourselves to Adam, they prostrated themselves, but not Iblis. He refused and waxed proud and became a disbeliever. وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسَ أَبَى وَاسْتَكْبَرَ وَكَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ He commanded them to prostrate with reverence and humility, taking Adam as a Qibla, just as we take the Kaaba as a Qibla, prostrating to the Lord of the Kaaba. They obeyed and expressed their total servitude to God but not Iblis. Iblis was not an angel, but he was akin to them in status, and so, in a sense, he was one of them and was also required to prostrate. As for the question of glorification and sanctification, God says, there is nothing that does not glorify him with praise. But God is closest to the servant when he is prostrating. Note that it is the servant. How do you become a servant? Not with glorification alone, but with prostration too. To glorify without prostrating is difficult. What does without prostrating even mean? It means heedlessness. In the prayer, we do both together and glorify when we are in the most sublime position, prostrate before God. This is why God commanded the angels in particular to prostrate, for they were already engaged in glorification and sanctification, and so he invited them to the most sublime station of combining this with prostration, which was an honor they did not yet have. So the fruit of the presentation of the names to them was that they attained the honor of prostration. Now Iblis had joined them in the glorification, but he missed out on the prostration. He attained glorification, for all things glorify God. And Iblis is a thing, but he did not attain the most sublime state of worship, prostration. The angels drew nearer to God and attained his closest proximity, but not Iblis. The command to prostrate issued to the angels and also to us is an invitation to the peak of God's nearness. Iblis did not attain this nearness, for he refused it. The Prophet ﷺ says, Paradise lies at the feet of mothers. This means prostration to one's parents in the form of humility and deference to them. Allah says in the Quran, your Lord has decreed that you worship none save Him, and be good to your parents. If one or both of them should reach old age with you, do not say to them, Ah, oh, nor chide them, but speak to them gracious words, and lower to them the wing of humility out of mercy, and say, My Lord, have mercy on them, even as they raised me when I was little. Surah Al Isra, verses 23 through 24. God says he refused and waxed proud and became a disbeliever. Pride and arrogance is what leads to unbelief. So it was the presence of Adam that caused the angels to attain this nearness to God when they prostrated before him as though he were their father or their mother at whose feet paradise lies. Jabir, the first thing that God created was the light of of your prophet. 
This is the answer the Prophet ﷺ gives to Jabir ibn Abdullah who asks him what was the first thing that was created. Nuru nabiyyika ya Jabir. This light is always prostrate before God and always has been. And thus it has the highest station in all things at all times. Aisha, mother of believers, Radwanullahi alayha, called the Prophet ﷺ a walking Qur'an. This is because he was always prostrate to God. This light is the supreme veil, Al-Hijab Al-Ahdam. And each time the disciple reaches annihilation in this light and this nearness, he becomes present in this absolute prostration, where God is nearest. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama sallayta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim. وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد